Fancy intro music, yeah! Woohoo! Hey there, Star Trek Fleet Command fans. Welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about territory capture a little bit more, but more so expounding on some things that came up in the past couple days. So with this, you know, I made two videos talking about how to do territory capture, but then also an honest review of that. That honest review led to a conversation with a developer from Scopely, you know, who I've talked to a little bit. So I can provide the feedback of what you're saying, I'm saying, we're saying, and what most of the game community feels is an issue with some of the oncoming and incoming updates in the game. Now, this is to not take a shot at the roadmap, which I actually think that there's some good things on the roadmap. The whole away officers thing. It sounds great. I'm curious to see how that plays out because it sounds like a completely new mechanic. But here's the thing. Territory capture sounded like a completely new mechanic. But what Terry Tory capture ended up being was a rehash of old mechanics, which is just new currencies and mining turned into a new platform. It's not armadas. So that's good. And it's not Borg swarm space. I guess that's good, but it still used the same preliminary structure underneath. And that led to a conversation between me and this dev that I'm going to show you of, I'm going to show you a part of it and show you how I think we could not get rid of the currencies because I think they're already a part of the game. Getting rid of them would be too troublesome, but make it easier for everybody as a whole to then operate with these currencies. And I know that sounds a little bit confusing, so let me kind of speak on what I'm talking about. We talk about this having so many, like so many different currencies. But if you go into your actual game and you go to the territory menu, now I can see this as a Commodore, you see it as an Admiral. You can see that, uh, you know, we have a small territory here for ore mining enhancer, whoopty frickin' do. They like it, they're happy, cool, whatever. But the inventory. So there's an actual alliance inventory now, which got me thinking, what can we turn this into to provide for everybody else? And you see there's also a little tracker here of who provides the most. Uh, Mirrodin, shout out to you. You're doing amazing, and I'm doing not amazing <laughs> comparatively to what you've provided. So anyway, thank you for your provisions. But what I was thinking here, and I'll go into the store and make sure I haven't clicked anything. You see, you just got the rewards here. And then once again, we have currency exchange for resources. So I'm not necessarily complaining because I need parts still like crazy. But you, you get the frustration, I guess, of where I'm coming from. So here's the conversation that was had. We're going to start from top to bottom. And I'll literally read it out uh, for those who need it. But it's kind of there in black and white. So I started off, or this is into the conversation. We've actually talked for about a good hour, hour and a half, but here's further into the conversation. And that's the majority of our complaints. More mining, more currencies, which goes against the statement that the team, the Scopely Dev team made just a month or so ago about alleviating the daily hour strain. And what I mean by that is, you know, remember they came out with this statement saying that we hear the players complaining that there's too much to do in game. And we're requiring people to stay in game too much. And I, I feel like I've got to, you know, continue to re point to this. And this is what they said. And I agreed this game does require you to do too much. And the reason being is because there is no way to do one thing. Like you have to do everything in the game to progress. You just do. So the dev responded, also, new types of events that we are planning. This was in reference to some of our previous conversation. And then I said the biggest issue with Star Trek Fleet Command is there's no longer a way to do everything. You have to pick and choose. And yes, I'm happy and excited about the new things that are coming. And he was referencing, or they were referencing, or she was referencing the roadmap of what's coming in 2021. And I admit, I'm excited about the roadmap. I'm excited about some of the things coming because it does add diversity. But with diversity, you can't add complications. And that's the key. Diversity can't lead to complication. It has to make the game fun without overcomplicating it. And then I said, the fact that after one and a half years of me asking, we finally got a roadmap. I was super excited about that. And then Dev said, 100% understood and fully agree. Agreeing with the statement that the biggest issue in FCFCC is that you have to do everything. So this led to my next one. 
which by the way, my former point would not be a problem if the game gave true path options, but currently you do have to do everything to be competitive. But if there was some form of market or intra-alliance trading, then we could focus on particular actions, whether they be active actions like PVE grinding or passive actions like mining. Example I gave was a true PVP path of play and research, a PVE path, a missions focused path, which kind of is PVE, but kind of not. Um, territory capture path that we could focus on those areas currently we all feel overwhelmed and there's still plenty of people out there who feel this is so complicated they don't even want to learn territory capture and i don't blame them it is complicated and then i said I, to give credit i like the grander scale framework of territory capture more than i do in what's coming in my other game of echoes which is sovereignty I do like the territory capture here more because there's a limit to what big alliances can do. There are massive alliances in EVE Echoes that are thousands of players that there's no limit to what they can control in sovereignty. It's literally whatever they can take and defend. Here, you're limited to five zones, as you can see right here. See? Limited to five zones. I like the grander scale of how they're implementing this to not make it too well heavy. So here comes the dev's question. And... This is something that I have to give mad props to Scopely. They are listening more to feedback. The past year is so much different than the first year of how I dealt with things. The first year I had one contact, a community manager, and that's it. Since then, I've had multiple developers I've gotten to talk to, multiple community managers, customer support reps. You know, the, their willingness to speak more to the community has grown. So we have to give a profit to that or a props to that not we've given profit to it don't worry plenty of profit has been given and i'm not saying it's perfect i'm still don't take that if you think i'm just sugar coating scopely please go watch my last video that's not the case here so anyway the dev says so how would you suggest we change things to make players feel it's not a must to do everything and that they can focus on just a few of those now bear in mind they put me on the spot here. Like I didn't have anything ready. So this is what I came up with. This is a mixture of ideas that some of you have come to me with and things that I've been pushing for in the game for quite some time. So here's what I said. We can both agree that the past three quarters have put a focus on alliance activity with events like Crucible of War, which I greatly praise and still to this day love Crucible of War. I know some of you don't. That's okay. That's not the point. So... I realized a grander market would go against Scopely's ideals, and I am, it's not necessarily taking a shot, but I feel like if we were going to have a market, we would have already. The whole black market thing, it's probably not going to be the same. Because it would limit daily purchases. I mean, if you could truly just have one whale and another alliance give out 50 million par steel for something, you ruin, you take away the ability for people to just buy packs. I get that, whatever, but this is why I try to find a happy medium. <clears throat> However, a specific intra-alliance <clears throat> trade or help system, we have the basic structure of that already here in the TC. And what I mean by that is Territory Capture came out with this button right here, inventory, as well as this right here, player tracking. And what this does is this is literally an alliance level. This is what an alliance can spend to do Territory Capture. There's now... A, this is essentially a hangar. It's a bank for an alliance. It exists. That's not what it's called, but that's what it is. So now I'm thinking, okay, now I'm going to take your mechanic you created, and we're simply going to change it. Basically, you got this one, add another one right here. And here's what I say. So instead of players mining data, gas, ore, et cetera, every day, all of these currencies could be put into an alliance inventory. Players could pull what's needed and contribute what they're doing that day. So for example, player A, who does board grinding all day, which I do a ton of, could get 250,000 inert nanoprobes and then donate 150,000 of those, keep 100,000 to do their refine, and then donate those to the alliance for somebody else who might need them. Player B, who, say, works at a restaurant and AFK mines in the background all day but isn't actively playing, could be mining gas and ore and crystal, where I'm not because I'm doing Borg stuff. I'm active. I'm PvPing. I'm grinding swarms. I'm doing active stuff. So they could deposit raw gas, and then they could get the probes that I put in, and I could get the gas they put in. So I'm doing my refinery every day, and they're doing probes. Yeah, we're, we're doing one thing each, yet we're contributing and getting the rewards for everything. Player A likes to be active in PvE. Player B likes to be inactive in play. Both are now benefiting each other using an alliance inventory system. Now, I go on to further go into detail. Now, to reduce this impacting Scopely's money stream, 
which is a capitalist myself. I completely get that, and I'm not hiding that. Y'all know who I am. We limit donation to raw materials, which means people still must rely on the RNG of the refinery, which I know a lot of people are going to scream no like I just did. But listen, if we have an inventory system, that means when the bonus refinery comes around, you can start pulling like you could never pull before. Because now we can, those RNGs that you normally can't get to, like I can never do a bonus refinery. I can't. I don't mind enough to get the full advantage of. But with the inventory system, you can. So even though we're, I'm still putting some of this on the RNG, I'm making it to where everybody can get every raw resource they can. That's what I'm suggesting. Which means if they want instant gratification, people can still buy packs, but at an alliance inventory for par steel, dilithium, titanium, inert nanoprobes, raw latinum, raw gas, raw ore, raw crystal. We've already got uh, the raw, the you know, isogen here. So taking every currency, every currency that needs to be refined or turned into something else would then be allowed in an alliance inventory. I said this could allow players to focus on individual PVE versus industry type pass and not have to do all of it. Would in theory also drive up the daily active users because if players feel like they don't have to do as much, they're going to do more. They're not going to, they, if they feel like they have to spend four hours a day, then they're not going to play every day. They're going to play on days that they have time. But if they only have to do one thing and they can do that for 30 or 60 minutes, they're going to play every day again. So we're going to drive up the DAU as well as start strengthening the community infrastructure of Alliance themselves. This gives people a reason to want to be a premier, be a Commodore, be an Admiral. It gives people a reason to be active in the Alliance and it helps Alliance leaders determine who's active and who's not to boot them. If so, inventory levels will also have a cap example, a level 20 Alliance could only hold say 1 million raw ore, 1 million raw crystal and 1 million raw gas. This limit would then give you more incentive to invest in the alliance to grow the alliance. Because right now it only allows you to have more members. That's really the only bonus. But now we could be increasing it to level 23. And maybe at level 23 we get 1.3 million. Maybe at level 25 we get 2 million. And it starts to grow as the alliance expenses grows. This would also give more relevance to actual alliance ranks. Because like I said, there's no point to premiere. And I just apologize for the wall. And I said, look, I've got four accounts. It's tough for me to do this every day. And then I asked for thoughts. And this is the this is the big point that you've been waiting for this entire time. 12 minutes into this video. Just read the post and I admit, I really like this idea. Allowing a collaboration in an alliance so that different players can engage with different verticals of play seems like a win-win for everybody. For us as players and for Scopely's team. Because that means they get more daily active people and probably end up buying more packs. The more activity in a server, the more people are going to play. The more that there's going to be combat. The more there's going to be et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, I'm not the one making all the calls here, but I'll present it to the team and see if we can get something like this in the roadmap. There it is. He agrees with the direction I'm taking it. She agrees with the direction I'm taking it. They agree with the direction I'm taking it. Sorry, I'm not telling you which dev it is. I don't. And the reason I, I do the anonymity thing is I don't need y'all blowing up devs, okay? I've got a busy enough day. Got a suggestion? Bring it here. As always, I pass all this along to the dev team. So this is a longer video, but I wanted to show to say a couple things. One, Scopely is trying to listen to get better. Digit is trying to listen to get better. I did gripe plenty about the bugs. I griped about the bugs that are still in the game today. I'll be griped about the bugs that have never been fixed. I griped about officers. Don't worry. I do all that griping. But still, this would allow people to play the game more and not have to continue to fight with these 15,000 currencies. Literally like 100 currencies in this game. No lie. But what I want to know is also get feedback from this video. So I need you to comment below. I need you to like it if you support it. I need you to share this amongst everybody. The more that I can be a conduit for you, the player, to make this game better, the longer the game lasts, the more fun we have, and the better everything becomes. And I need your help to do that. So like the video, subscribe, follow the channel, hit the join button if you haven't already. And that's it. Like I said, shout out to Scopely for interacting with me and having this conversation and for us trying to make this game better. Live long and prosper. Stay safe, other space cowboys. And I'll catch you on the next video. Star Trek, Fleet Command. even better outro than the intro.
Yeah! Woo!